and welcome to another Final Web 2.0 tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use the image section and the video section. We'll begin by adding an image section to our empty group. Upon choosing the image section, you'll be prompted to choose what image you would like to use for the section. If you switch it to a URL instead of a local, you can paste in an image URL from somewhere on the web. Under the local image type, you can choose to upload a local file, use a file already on the server, or pick an image from the Pixabay stock photo library. We'll go ahead and pick a stock photo now. You can search the photo library here to find the perfect image for your situation. Since we're dealing with photos and videos, I'll search for photos related to cameras. This one looks good here. Once you have chosen your image, you will see an image preview along with two icons. The X icon here will remove the image and allow you to choose a different one, but we'll leave our current image here and click this first pencil icon. Anywhere these icons are shown with images, you can click on them. Click here to pull up the image in our provided image editor. While this is not a super powerful image editor like Photoshop would be, it does provide simple tools that you can use to modify your image. These are mostly self-explanatory, so we will not go into depth on this. We'll go ahead and crop our image a little bit, apply, and save. This will update the image in your section. We'll go ahead and now add this image section. Now that we have added the section to our group, we can arrange the sections to scale the image up to its full size or down to fit our content, as well as move it to the spot we want. Having arranged our image, we'll click Done Arranging and open up the Section Properties menu. First here under the Properties tab, we can see that we can make our image into a link. By default, the image doesn't link to anything, but it can be useful if you want to use the image as a banner to link to a new page or as a preview of a file. This image type selector is the same as when you first selected your image, so this setting should only be changed if you intend to use a different image. These next three settings have explanations in their text boxes, but I will go ahead and demonstrate them for you. First, here we have the image title. This is displayed whenever you hover the mouse over the image. Next we have the alternate text for the image. This isn't displayed to the typical user, but it is useful for search engines to find your image, as well as being able to be read by programs used for the visually impaired. Finally, we have this padding setting. This is especially useful when you feel the image is too close to another section. Just like when we first added the image, we have the options to modify the image or remove the image. This last setting is not needed for most images. Our grid system usually restricts section heights to be multiples of 30, but clicking this box can slightly change the scaling of the image if something important is being cut off on the edges of an image. Usually don't need to worry about that. Now that we're done with the settings in the Properties tab, we'll take a look at the Layout Settings tab. We first find the options to modify the border of your image. The border radius value will round the corners of your image, as you can see here. This setting will allow you to change the size of the image border. And this color selector will allow you to change the color of the border. These next settings deal with animations. For most images, using animations is unnecessary. However, it can be tastefully used, so I will demonstrate for you. Choosing an animation from the list will cause the animation to be played both in the settings and on the image over here. We'll choose a tasteful pulse. Here we have the option to change the speed of the animation, so if it is too fast or too slow for you, you can speed it up or slow it down a little bit. And this will allow the image to delay the animation after the trigger. For images, there are separate animation settings for the triggers of the page loading and for the image being scrolled into view. That's all the settings for images. 
so we will save our changes and move on to video sections. First, we need to add the video section to our group, just like any other section. Upon choosing the video section type, we will be prompted with a similar window to when we first added our images. Once again, you have the abilities to add files from your own computer, the website server files, or search the Pixabay video library, but there are also more video types. We have the ability to add YouTube, Vimeo, or remote videos, as well as adding live streaming. How to add live streaming will be covered in a future tutorial. These all, first three are all added via the URL, so we will simply use one of our previous tutorials on YouTube as an example. A preview of the window should show up. We'll go ahead and add our video section to the group and take a look at the section properties. These first couple settings are the same as in that prompt window, so they only need to be changed if you are going to swap out the video for a different one. This slider allows you to change the height of the video. Note that this only changes the height, not the width of the video. To change the width, you will need to rearrange the sections. There are no layout settings for videos, so we can go ahead and save our changes and adjust that width. The height may not scale correctly whenever you first save your changes, so you may need to refresh the page. Going over to the Arrange Sections option, we will change the width of our video and place the video where we would like it. We'll click Done Arranging and that's all there is to it. Now you know how to add images and video sections to your Final Web 2.0 site.